Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the American Revolutionary Mod. Last time around we had the biggest battle in this series as of yet, and at, as it looks right now, it looks like that is going to be the biggest battle, because if we take a look at what the British have left, they have uh, two territories left in North America. One of which is Quebec, New France, and the other one is Montreal, Upper Canada. But other than that, they do not hold any territory in North America. They do hold a bit of uh, three islands in the Caribbean, but that's about it. And uh, today I have uh, not actually lined up a battle to start up with. Um, but yeah, what happened last time after the big battle is that, I mean, the army I have under my control is pr is quite sizable, but it would kind of, I mean, it would kind of drive it to almost extinction if I tried to go after the British again, because quite a lot of British troops managed to escape, if I'm not ex entirely mistaken. So I think we're going to hold off. We do not really have a force to cut them down right now. We did take out quite a lot of units. Uh, they're missing at least like six or seven units. I uh, can kind of look through here and then I they probably lost tons of men. They're not going to have the money to replenish them. So we can bide our time. So Washington is going to retreat back. Or retreat back. He's gonna move back to Niagara in the Alaconquin territory. We're gonna have Wilcox move down, get rid of the Cherokee that has been plaguing our um, Ameri Ameri <laughs> well, Americanization of this territory. It's a clear out result. I don't think I lost anyone. Or did this one have a cannon? I'm not entirely sure. It's a shame these, oh, I mean, the new ones actually tell you if you lose a unit. The older ones don't. If I had the money, I could move up and build a fort. I think we're going to place ourselves in the farmland here. I don't have any money to, rep to repair any of the buildings that burnt down. I think we're also going to move this army over. And we're going to place them at Fort Duquesne. There's no Cherokee really up north, or any sizable force. There is kind of a sizable force going for um, Williamsburg, Virginia. This time, however, I've seen them pretty early on, and I mean, all I need is a general, I think, and then I can hold them. Nathaniel Green is going to move, and his task is to eradicate the Cherokee. We are recruiting troops. For some reason, you're not able to recruit troops down here. But I don't think, I guess, the Americans did really recruit any troops down in Florida, in Savannah, Georgia. Because you can't... Oh, yeah, no, Savannah, Georgia has the Georgia skirmishers. But I guess they didn't actually fight that much in the war down here. Most of the regiments and militias are, of course, being able to recruit up north. Um, there aren't really any more moves to make. So we're going to end turn. Oh yeah, you know what? Um, there is one possibility. It's to strike against Upper Canada. That would be a major blow. And I do have the forces are ready to do such a thing. First and foremost, it it also cuts these guys off from their retreat back to uh, safety behind the walls of Quebec. We're gonna do... let's see, which force is the bigger one? We're gonna put the Americans against the bigger one because I want the French to lead the attack at Montreal just because we haven't used them as of yet. So the America is going to cross, and these guys actually do reinforce, which is not, that's the bigger battle than I actually wanted. 
So we're gonna withdraw, and we're gonna wait, and then have both of them cross, both the French and the Americans. I didn't think they were going to be able to reinforce, but I mean, it is down the road here, but um, it's not within the limits of the uh, reinforcements. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and end turn, see what the enemy comes up with. And I think we're going to go ahead and just watch through this, because this goes rather quickly. It's kind of unnecessary for me to actually cut them away, cut the part away. So we saw... Okay, workers are rioting in Carolina. They were a bit unhappy there. I'm not entirely sure why. But I recruited troops to put them down. So that should be fine. And, I mean, I've got this force to move into Fort Duquesne and get rid of that Native American unit. And with the money I gained from the end turn, we got plenty of bloody money to... Uh, Go ahead and replenish everything. Also make sure that the armies are going to be... F that was expensive. 2,000. Is Washington going to cost another 300, which wasn't that bad. We're all in battle. Attacking general, which is good. Ports, being built in Florida and Georgia. Uh, two new moons. A lot of the moves weren't really covered by... Uh, it looks on his banner that he's lost... Uh, it, it is that one. It's a single unit. There is quite a few Cherokee blocking our way. But the thing is, going the other way around... Would have meant I'm gonna station myself in the open because I do think the natives gonna have advantage in the deep forest. Carolina is now under control as we recruited uh, two units: the uh, South Carolina Light Infantry, Ninth uh, Infantry, and then we're gonna get Marion's Rangers as well to hold them down. The George. Um, Regiment of Skirmishers is being recruited and they're going to be able to hold down Savannah and so on. And with the port opening over here, gain some more trade. And are we trading out of the port in Carolina? Yes, as well, 480. That's very good. Lots of money rolling in. Um... They moved away the Cherokee armies that were kind of threatening up here. They could have moved on Williamsburg. So I'm not needed. There's no need to recruit any further troops here. George Washington is replenishing. Right. And the forces here have moved north. What we want to do is just block the path so that these guys cannot link up with the enemy. So first the French troops are going to go and take Fort Frontenac, which is a church, College of Divinity in Canada. And we're going to make sure that the American troops are going to station on the hill right next to it, with a little bit of high ground, which means that they cannot cross here. I think, yeah, there is a crossing all the way up there, but then they would have to take a major way around to get there. So we've kind of stopped the these forces to linking up with each other, so we kind of block them off. We need something of a troop here, so I'm going to move over the Connecticut Light Horse to the Iroquois Territory. And... I mean, there's loads more troops to be recruited, but I think I'm fine with what I have. And I'm not going to go through building a lot more stuff. What we're going to do, though, is... I don't really have any battle right now. I guess end turn again and we can see about going against these Cherokee. If something happens up here. Or if these guys and Washington are fully replenished. Then we can combine these two and move here. And otherwise we can take these and strike from two sides. Completely annihilate them. Or if Washington just goes and attacks these guys again. 
and then these head north. We'll see what happens. What am I actually researching? No, everything there seems fine. Uh, oh yeah, uh, two turns until the new barracks is done and more troops will be available. But until then, let's go ahead and end turn. Let's see what happens. France, Great Britain, they moving, they're moving north. We've got two, right, flying shuttle. Governors in Virginia, we've got new election results. So we've got... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, they regain control, so we, we keep the same government. Well, that's good. It's kind of uh, a shame that we lost the, the first group. And as someone said, it's technically not like the... What do you say? Con Continental Congress or something? Before they actually was like set up officially. Could be an uh, a ambush here, but we're gonna go through. I'm gonna start from the south. The uh, only 270 men. Still, we lost too many men. No entirely sure when the iron mine turned to dust when we attacked. Are they going to intercept us? No. 500 men, though, is kind of a lot to lose just to such a small force. Which is always annoying when you out resolve like that and it's a small enemy force and you lose surpri a surprising high amount of troops these guys are not ready Washington is not yet uh, he's more or less ready so he could actually move on these guys and then these are actually trying to uh, kind of move around us what I think I'll do is I'll actually go for Montreal, Upper Canada, and that will be this video's battle. So we'll take another territory from the British, and we'll have the French lead the attack, and then we'll bring in the American force as reinforcements. Now this opens up for the British to go down here, but I don't think this is such a key territory for them to take. Um, they'll make a lot more money retaking this one, so... That is, of course, if we are victorious here. So we're gonna first move into range, which worked fine, and then we're gonna attack and lay siege. So they have... Adam Michaels holds 2,600 men, and, I mean, we have 2,600 2, just in our reinforcements. Did I say 260 men? 2,600 men. And we have just in the American reinforcement 2,600 men. And then 1,400 um, in the French army. A lot of these guys are native as well, if you look at it. 33rd Grenadiers. Might be a 2nd Battalion. Light Infantry, British Infantry, King's Royal Regiment, some cannons. King of Orange Dragoons, they have a lot of cavalry, 300, 300 and, no, actually 480, right? We don't have, we don't have cavalry at all, actually, besides the generals, so that's uh, a weakness we have. But with that said, let's go ahead and join into battle against Adam Michaels in Upper Canada. We have some nice flat ground just outside this town, which I'm not entirely sure it can't be the town we're attacking. I think that's a little bit bigger. Uh, it, oh yeah, it's, you can actually see it on the map. It's right over there. So it's a smaller um, town just ahead of that. It's on our left. Don't think the hopefully the British won't be setting up over there, but a large po a large portion of their deployment zone is over there. Could be that the uh, pl places its artillery there just because it won't be able to fire at us. That's usually how the AI does it. Um, then this army is almost entirely French, or at least in the infantry. There are no French cannons. So this is how the French unit look. 
Uh, I think it would look nicer, but maybe they can't really, um, you know, unit, unit specific banners or flags being carried by them because it would look better if there was a French flag uh, above the unit rather than the American one. Also looked kind of weird. They kind of fit because they ha have similar uniforms. So it's not that out of... Uh, and then the general. On the picture it looks kind of like a... Like a 1600s French general. But when we actually look at him, he looks more like... Same kind of deal as the George Washington character. But with that said, let's go ahead and start. And then we get our American reinforcements. The British deployed a large portion of the cavalry and cannons over on there, so that will be guarded by the town. And then they have the troops spread out a little bit all over the place. The French can advance. We're going to make a line somewhere around there. Got to keep an eye on the left because they did have a lot of cavalry over there. And here comes the American. A big wig character on the picture there, and then he's followed by 13th Massachusetts and some artillery. And then the Stark Brigade, Colonial Militia, and so on. We have cavalry or native cavalry and British troops massing in the center of front of, in front of us. Militia garrison moving over there. Let's try not to get run over by the cavalry. So we're going to halt and draw our lines right here. Three man deep to maximize firepower. And then I'm going to hold fire, wait for the uh, cavalry to get... Okay, they're going to sit out there and fire at us. French troops open up fire. And we were only able to take eight of them to start off with. But it looks like it's not going too well for them. Oh shit, we forgot about... I forgot about the general. And he rides through just... As the cannons open fire. We have more enemy units coming up on our left. The American reinforcements will take the first two regiments, call them up and as fast as possible move into the flank to try and uh, deal with these guys. Then, you know what, we're going to hold fire with these guys, make sure they're all reloaded. And then there's the British advance here, towards these guys, oh, the bloody cavalry. They're moving in a wide arc at the same time as the main attack is going down. Right, we're going to open fire with that one. Set up in the forest. We can see about stopping these guys. And at the same time, I want to see here. Right, they're just opening up with their volleys now. Towards the uh, big mass of British troops moving in here. Now, I do have these. Gonna move down in. I think it's a road rather than a riverbed, but it kind of looks like a riverbed. Then going back here, the native auxiliaries were sent away. I'm going to get the cannon to come in the middle there. I want to see how the French are doing up here against the massed British troops. We're going to soon put down flanking fire on them as well. The British are steadily advancing on the French lines. We don't want to tangle with them though, so... You know what? This is how I'm going to do it. Two retreating over there. One retreating over here. More enemy cavalry is turning up. 
Now we're kind of isolating the units that went on the flank. But they will also soon retreat and will set up new line there. With this, I'm going to tell the cannon to hold fire. Switch to canister. You'll have to go into square. Retreat just a little bit so you can sit and shoot at the natives over there. More American troops are arriving by the second and we're getting a steady advantage. French troops are being ridden down as we retreat but we will set up these two. You will hold fire, switch to canister and then prepare to fire. The American troops will be set up as reserves. French general will move slightly, hold fire. I think we've got some good uh, canister shots right down into the British. They're lining up to fire at us. I'm hoping my troops are about to return fire. The square is firing, sending away the uh, 33rd Grenadiers. And most of the British infantry has had enough and is now retreating. The French troops have... Uh, oh, they one uh, unit of the German Grenadiers actually reached... The French flanking force and um, encourage enemy routing but do they slightly losing in this fight actually pull back do I dare fire a canister if I can fire it kind of right in the back, we kind of need to move these two though. Okay, our, our troop... No, the British troop actually retreated. So hold fire on the canister! Because we don't want to shoot our own. Switch to round shot, fire at will. Then you will move up. These guys will form square. Damn, I forgot about all the bloody American troops that's coming through. Just hold back here. Right. General. The American general needs to move away. I have more troops than I need. I'm going to put two here. The square kind of needs to be broken up. I don't know where we're going to put you. Put you there. You'll switch to round shot as well. The British cavalry was defeated up there. See if you can move like that. And you move there. And now this square is attacked once more. The French troops hold though. It's a massacre of all the horsemen. Right, get back on your cannon. It's a bit of a mess in this corner of the battlefield. What we'll have as soon as that British uh, Dragoon unit is defeated, the French, the little French unit, or the French units that are left, will retreat and the Americans will now move out, draw a line from the house to the cannons. The cannons will switch to canister. French troops are going to move up, join there. Which means that this cannon can move up and then switch to canister and fire from over there. You will hold fire. French unit will set up there and will hold fire. American general. Just in case you can move to hold the flank over there. Now the flanking three French troops dealt with the musketoon guys. Or oh, musketmen. I I don't know why I said Musketoon. Move forward. Uh, unlimber. Switch to canister. Quite surprised that there's still troops up ahead still standing. I want the canister to go through the militia unit. And see if we can't blow these suckers away. 33rd Grenadiers is still there. Now when the second battery is setting up, we'll definitely get some good shots out of that. Plenty of shots is being pulled down upon these guys now. 
The light infantry retreated. Ooh, now we had canister rip through the militia. And they're gone. They're retreating. There's still British troops here though. Quite a few of them. I'm gonna move this one over here. This one down the road. This one along the fence line over there. We've got natives again. The French. Gonna have them draw a line through there. All the cannons. You will definitely hold the fire with the canister. You will switch a round shot. And pick your targets. We've got quite a lot of American units. Line up here. We'll have them march through there and join all the French troops. Now we have a bunch of batteries. I think the British... Is that a battery out there? No, it's armed citizenry. I thought I'd order them to fire. 13 Massachusetts is coming under heavy fire by the native auxiliaries. I think they're... They lost their flag, they're tired, they're wavering. As soon as they're able to open fire though, I think that will change. And since the uh, Dragoons up in their flank got killed off, means that they will be joined by these other two regiments, namely the Stark Brigade and uh, Finis, Finnish, Finni, 18th. Phineas and Ferb's 18th Regiment. And now when they're actually able to put down fire in return, it's no longer a serious issue. Uh, we've got General's Bodyguard and British Line. We'll have the French Line advance, followed by this American Column. Make sure that everyone fires it well. Once these three units have defeated the native auxiliaries here, uh, they'll be moving on the armed citizenry over there. I wonder, do I reach with... Oh, there's two units. Oh, no, it's a, a really big unit. I'll tell the artillery to fire in that direction. Surprisingly tough battle when we had such an advantage. Alright, the enemy is defeated. With that, these three units. They'll be split up going through the town, so we'll s order them to move here first. Regroup and then attack across the field. Hopefully these guys will keep running. There's still 133 of them, so they could come back. I have plenty of batteries though, ready to plow them down with cannibal. French troops, ready to march on the British general and take him out. Two smaller units will be moved into the flank and they'll advance from over here. And the three bigger ones is going to move over here and strike from that side. Now I'm thinking the British General will retreat there rather than charge straight ahead. Plus he's coming under heavy artillery fire to the point where he's lost ho half his bodyguard. Interesting that the British unit decides to place less than like less than a quarter of its troops actually facing the French coming on. Uh, in this mod I found that actually staying behind the walls is pretty good. Normally I wouldn't just because it reduces the firepower that you're able to project upon the enemy. The British are leaving their position and uh, you know what? We'll just let our man rip through them. They are kinda stationed behind the wall. First line is in front. Bit unnecessary. They're gonna receive volleys from three regiments. 
So it's probably not going to go too well for them. And then I even forgot about the flanking ones. Plus that they are receiving quite a heavy artillery fire. Native Americans seem to have come back and attacked. Enemy general was killed. Just as he was leaving here, he was hit by a cannonball. And now the American column is turning up as well. But we don't need to put all those troops in there. I'm gonna put these two smaller units above them, firing into their flank. Surprised that the British troops are uh, held so long, since they were facing three British, uh, not British, uh, three French regiments, and then such heavy artillery fire. The French will advance. Guys on the flank probably be able to fire a bit on them as they retreat just to make sure that their defeat is finalized uh, they won't return at the same time we've got our uh, Phineas and Ferb brigade turning into position and now all artillery should be focused On to that final unit, which is hiding out here, to gather with the native allies. We'll put the French along the walls. Let's make sure that these guys are all fully reloaded before we move. Oh! Before we move out of position. Right, you're gonna move along here then. There's a. L oh, they're charging? A final hurrah for the armed populace of Upper Canada, or Lower Canada, or whatever it was. Are my troops ready to fire? Are they gonna halt and fire at us? I guess they realize charging into b bayonet infantry is not the greatest idea. And the French troops aren't really ready to fire back until the last part of the battle. And fire at them as they retreat. Luckily, I guess, we didn't actually kill that many of the good citizens of Lower Upper Canada, or wherever, wherever this place was called. But there we have the battle. We were victorious. And we didn't suffer that many casualties, no single unit of ours left the field. Even though there were some heavy cavalry attacks. The enemy did outnumber us in cavalry quite a bit. But comparatively, the enemy lost a lot more men and most importantly, they lost one very valuable territory. And one of the few they have left in North America. Which at this point only numbers one, the fort at Quebec. We lost 800 men, which is actually more than I thought we lost. I thought we would lose a lot. I, th I thought maybe 500, 600, 800 is actually quite a lot. Um, and I guess a lot of it was incurred by the French army, but look at this. They've all uh, acquired chevrons to the point where this guy even got two. So they did a lot of good work. French naval infantry is leading the board in the amount of killed... Uh, enemy troops but I think this might be that they were allocated as I think it works like this when you're attacking a town and the people retreat you you still kill everyone like everyone is lost all hands of the enemy army is lost and these are st uh, still counted as kills and then allocated onto the troops that were at the battlefield and I think Looking at the um, yes, the disparity in between some of the American units and the French, that all those extra kills of the retreating troops were allocated to the French naval infantry, because there's I don't think they volleyed down 300 men in a lot of these units. 
meaning that that's why they got so many kills. Uh, but they did perform well. They did hold the line and so forth. Uh, but there we have it. The Upper Lower Canada, whatever. Upper Canada? This is Upper Canada. Where the hell is Lower Canada? Is there any point? There's no point that is lower than this one. Or this territory. But I guess... Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and build this up. Replenish the French. Ready for we'll have the Americans Forward! stationed outside, Forward! facing this way. They can actually build a fort. And that would stop the enemy entirely from coming through here. There is a, a crossing point here. So they could just walk, move around us and then group up with all the British troops over here. Which I'm guessing is their plan. I kinda don't want to lose, uh, kinda don't want to move away here just yet. The province is still unhappy. And even though Washington would like to pursue these guys and crush them, uh, I'm worried that these, the Iroquois, will turn up en masse and just slaughter the province and take it back. Which uh, I'm not too happy with. They should be soon also, My a majority of them should be Protestant, Christian Protestants. So that should be nice. I guess for the next episode, I'll have to end turn because there's no move. So it would be either that, you know, the British attack me somewhere in the end turn. Or I think we'll switch focus a little bit. And then... We can make an entire episode just about uh, Nathaniel Green going uh, it balls deep in Cherokee territory and annihilating that faction. Getting rid of them and that will just... Not only will it open up all these troops, but it will op open up a lot of opportunity for me to uh, like build these provinces up and stuff. Because now I've kind of hesitated building stuff down here just because the natives would come in and burn it down like they did with uh, Virginia where they burnt down the entire province. With that said, we're going to end the episode right here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.